Okay, in this video we want to look more about the dihedral group. So first of all, let's just recall the definition of a group. It's a set together with a binary operation satisfying these three axioms. So we have an identity, an element that when you combine it with any other element, uh, it doesn't change. You have an inverse for every element. And then finally you have an associativity property. Great. So. Uh, in the last video, we presented the notion of the dihedral group, which is rigid motions of a regular n-gon, and we looked at the example when n equals 3, and we noticed there were six rigid motions of the regular 3-gon, in other words, the equilateral triangle, and we came up with a multiplication table, also known as a Cayley table, for those operations combined with each other. So now what I want to do is look at the problem in general. So let's say we've got an n-gon. Okay, so the first thing to figure out is how many rigid motions are there, and they will break down into two categories, rotations, and reflections and um, then we can just count those up and then what we'll do is find that many rigid motions and then argue that we have all of them. Great. So notice how many rotations are there? Well, there's exactly n. We can uh, rotate by any multiple of 2 pi over n. So let's say we could say rotation by uh, 2 pi k over n, and this is for k between 0 and n minus 1. So that's n total. Great. And now we can have some simplification here, and then notice that uh, if r equals rotation by 2 pi over n, then really we have the identity, which is r to the 0 power, and then r, r squared, which is rotation by 2 pi times 2 over n, all the way up to r to the n minus 1. We really have these are all of our rotations. They're all just multiples of the simplest rotation. And I should say we could go counterclockwise or clockwise. We'll go counterclockwise. So R is one click this way counterclockwise. But then R squared will be two clicks. R cubed will be three clicks and so on and so forth. Now let's look at our reflections. So the thing is, is we have a set of reflections through every axis, and um, that's going to really break up into two parts. So if n is even, then a reflection through axis 1 will go through a reflection uh, through axis like n over 2 plus 1 or something like that. And so in that case, we also have to consider uh, reflections through the midpoint between two vertices. And so, but when all is said and done, what you'll get is n total reflections. So uh, let's say that n total reflections. So I'll let you guys think more about that on your own. Maybe draw some pictures. I would say that is maybe something that's super useful to do. So in other words, we could call these like S1 up to Sn. Great. But now, a fact from geometry is that uh, combining a rotation with a reflection will always give us a reflection. So what that means is that S, if we set S equal to S1, the very first reflection, which could just be defined by reflection about this axis, then S is a reflection, S times R is a reflection, S times R squared is a reflection, and then finally S times R to the n minus 1 is a reflection. And this gives us n total reflections. So we argued geometrically up there that there are n total reflections, and then we algebraically down here um, arrived at n total reflections just by combining a reflection and a rotation. So in fact, 
we can take the elements of the dihedral group to be these rotations right here and then these reflections right here. Great. So I'm going to clean up the board and then uh, what we'll do is we'll look at how these um, play off of each other. In fact, what we really want to look at is um, how S and R commute with each other. So on the last board, we argued that all the elements of the dihedral group can be expressed as follows. So we have all of our rotations first. So E is the do-nothing rotation, the identity element. R is a rotation by 2 pi over n radians counterclockwise. Then R squared will be 2 pi over n times 2 radians and so on and so forth up to R to the n minus 1, which will end up being a rotation by 2 pi over n radians clockwise because going counterclockwise by that much is the same thing as going clockwise by um, just a little bit. Okay, great. And then also S could be really any reflection. And then we can build all of the rest of the n total reflections by combining it with our rotations, which we argued before. Um, and so we'll take S to be the reflection through this orange ax axis, which goes through vertex 1. So now um, what we want to do is see how R and S interact. So we're saying SR is one of our reflections. So let's figure out what RS is. So let's calculate RS and then recall that we send the n-gon from the right to the left because this is like a function. So that means we need to uh, apply S first and that is going to give us a new n-gon. And then we need to apply R second. Good. And let's see what we get. So that's going to fix one. Well, S will fix one, and then it'll swap two and N. So we'll get a two here and N here. It'll swap three and N minus one. So we'll end up at this spot. And now if we do our rotation, so we're doing one click to the counterclockwise direction. So this will give me an n minus 2 here, n minus 1 here, n, uh, 1, and a 2. So we've got something like that. But now let's look at the beginning and the end of this whole situation. And notice that this is equivalent to making a rotation through this yellow axis. I put it going through vertex 3, but it really doesn't go through vertex 3 unless we've got a really special end gone here. Um, and then that's the same thing as the axis over here. So let's write that down. So let's do reflection through this yellow axis. Great, but notice what RS did is it clicked my uh, reflective axis back counterclockwise a little bit. And we might argue that SR will click it in the other direction. And so that motivates us for us to ask the question, if we do SR to some power, how can we achieve that yellow axis? Well, if RS clicks the reflective axis back this way, SR is going to click it this way, and then we need to click it N minus one times until it coincides with the yellow. So let's do... SR to the N minus 1 and make that calculation to see that it will be the same reflection. So I'll clean up the board so that we can do that calculation um, nicely. Okay, so I've got the parts of my board cleaned up that I need cleaned up, and now we're going to look at S, R to the N minus 1 and compare that with R, S. So since we're going from right to left, because these are like functions acting on the N gon, we need to do R to the N minus 1 first, and we need to do S second. I've left my yellow axis in there because as a hint, these should be the same. So R to the N minus 1 is N minus 1 clicks in the leftward direction, which is the same thing as one click in the rightward direction. So in other words, we'll have one, two, n, n minus one, n minus two. That's what we'll get by moving this, uh, sorry, rotating this clockwise by two pi over n, which is the same thing as counterclockwise by n minus one copies of this.
Okay, good. Now we want to do this reflection through the orange axis, which I'll transpose over here so that we can see it. And notice that if we reflect through that orange axis, this vertex end will be fixed, and now all of these will be swapped. So we'll have a 1 here, a 2 here, an n minus 1 here, and an n minus 2 here. But if we um, compare the beginning and the end, notice that this is the same reflection that we had before. We have a reflection through this yellow axis. So I'll just write that as RS because that's what we got before. So now we've got a commutation rule for this reflection and rotation. We generally want to write the S's on the left, so if we ever see an S on the right, we can switch them with a cost of raising R to the N minus one power. Okay, good, I'll clean up the board, and then I'm gonna present a succinct way to write the dihedral group. Okay, good. So now that we've done our calculation, we figured out how R and S commute with each other, we can write this style for the dihedral group. So sometimes this is called a presentation or a generators and relations uh, form of the group. So we have these angle brackets on either side, and then here we're saying R and S, and that means everything in the dihedral group can be created with this element R and this element S, and recall that R was this rotation by uh, 1 over n of the circle around counterclockwise and s was one of the reflections. And then we have these two kind of starting rules. So r to the nth power is the same thing as s squared, which is the identity. And that's obvious because if we rotate 1 over n of the circle around n times, then we're obviously going to end up back at the same point. And then if we do any sort of reflection twice, we're going to end up back at the same point. Um, and then, this is the calculation that we just did. We showed that Rs equals Sr to the n minus 1. And this way of writing the dihedral group captures all of the information um, of the group. Okay, good. So now let's do an example of a little calculation in a dihedral group. So let's say n equals 6. So in other words, we are looking at the symmetries or the rigid motions of a regular hexagon. And now let's simplify the following. So let's say we have R S R to the fourth S R cubed. Good. So, um, what we have going on here is we're doing, remember we go from right to left, so we do three rotations, a reflection, four rotations, a reflection, and a rotation. And we should be able to simplify this down into one of the uh, elements that we have up here. Okay, and that is by using this rule right here. Okay, great. So now the first thing I'm, that I'm going to do is I will um, do some grouping. So let's uh, see what our goal is. Remember our goal is to get all the S's to the left. So notice this S is to the right of this R. So let's do grouping right there and then we can uh, do a switch. So notice this is going to be the same thing as SR to the N minus 1, but N minus 1 now is 5 times r to the 4 times sr cubed. Great. And now I'm not really worrying about grouping so much. I'll group as needed, but remember we have associativity in uh, the dihedral group, so it's not really important to worry about the associativity. Great. And so now by exponent rules, that's the same thing as sr to the ninth sr cubed. But now let's remember that r to the 6th is equal to 1, so that means r to the 9th is really equal to r cubed. So that means we can write this as sr cubed, sr cubed, good. But now let's look at this. <clears throat> we can really just jump straight to the end because we know uh, rotation composed with a reflection is always a reflection. So that means this is a reflection and this is also a reflection, but they're actually the same reflection. And anytime you compose one reflection with itself, you will end up with the identity. So this ends up being the identity. 
Okay, good. So I'm going to erase the board and then we're going to do one more simple calculation in a general dihedral group. Okay, so we're going to look at this claim which allows us to commute arbitrary powers of R past S. And it says that if we have RKS, that's the same thing as S, R uh, to the N minus K. And this is all for all uh, K between 1 and N minus 1. So we're going to do that. So we're going to do this by induction, and our base case is actually already done, and that is from the definition of the dihedral group. Good. So now let's make an induction hypothesis. So our induction hypothesis is that we suppose this is true for some k. And now we're going to consider the k plus first case. So we'll look at r to the k plus 1 times s. And I'm not going to write down how careful we need to be about what, where the k is. I'll let you think about that. That'll be a good exercise. So r to the k plus 1. So now we can write that as r uh, to the k times r to the first power times s. Great. And now, because of our base case, we can write this as r to the k s um, r to the n minus 1. Okay? And then, um, by our induction hypothesis, we can uh, move this r to the k past the s, and that's going to leave us with s r to the n minus k times r to the n minus 1. Okay, but notice that's going to give us S R to the uh, N plus N minus K plus 1. So I've written it like that because what we're going to do is take one of those R to the N's and use the fact that that's the identity. So notice we can write this as S R to the N R to the N minus K plus 1. But this r to the n right here is equal to the identity because of the structure of the dihedral group. So we're, all we're really left with is this s times this power of r, which is exactly what we want to finish the proof. Okay, this is a good place to stop the video.